Takeover chatter and Twitter. Icon stake in Hertz. FDA warning on intercept. 10,000 October 25 calls bought in IGT. This is the most common way that we use news to trade. See news. Trade news. See size. Trade size. So easy, a caveman can do it. Or an algorithm. This is, in fact, the main way that I identify and initiate my trades. I'm actively listening, searching for news, <clears throat> events, size, anything really to trade. However, when we're trading news, it's actually more important to know what not to trade. It's this discretion that's going to separate us from the button-mashing caveman or the machines. So how do we learn discretion? It's buried in all the information we don't choose to actively pursue. All the stuff that kind of goes in one ear and out the other, even though we don't choose to immediately initiate a trade on it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. We want to take all these little tidbits where you say, that's interesting, and uh, file them away for later. Now, hopefully, your brain's already doing this subconsciously on some level. This sort of passive listening as you hear, not urgent, but still useful information. These fragments are like pieces of a puzzle that we don't know the picture to yet. And we want to add them to other pieces like charts, technicals, fundamentals, and complete the picture of our trade. The goal is to build and reinforce a strong market awareness that strengthens your instincts as a trader and teaches discretion. That feeling of something's up with this stock or this trade doesn't feel right. Maybe there's an upcoming event you don't know about, um, or it's old news, or you're early, but it could be any number of things. Unfortunately for us, these are all synonyms for wrong. So how do we figure out what we missed so we can minimize the damage and move on? Here's an example. About a month ago, Aurelius Value came out with a short call on PetMed Express. And there was some pretty good dissent on their thesis and discussion online. A couple of weeks later, a certain wire ran the headline that PetMed was under SEC investigation. Uh, the wire neglected to mention that their source was just a random guy on Twitter. We'd already seen the tweet, passed around, and knew it was bullshit, saved ourselves and our users some money. Um, personally, I have an awful memory. So if you're anything like me at the end of the trading day, you're kind of fried from being plugged in all day. I just want to grab a beer, get on my train, get home, and clear my head. So all these little pieces of passive information that I collected over the day, they just disappear if I don't do anything with them. So what do we do? Originally, I took notes. I wrote everything down that I thought was interesting or notable, along with the trades I took and their outcomes. Uh, this helps a bit with recall, but it's really shit for revisiting later. When you're scrolling through a stack of legal pads trying to find a piece of news from a year ago, it's extremely inefficient. Next evolution, Excel spreadsheets and Google Docs. Much more organized, easy to search, easy to share. Now we've just pulled all that information into our own custom searchable archive. But before we built our own archive, we just used Twitter. It's one of the main reasons we joined Twitter was to archive information. And anyone can do it for themselves. You can then use Twitter's advanced search to review your own thoughts and crowdsource ideas from the rest of the FinTwits out there. What was always amazing to me was how much the process of creating the database just by itself helps with recall and creates awareness. The process of hearing, seeing, typing, and revisiting news as you enter it into the archive, is pounding the information into my brain through repetition. Now I can use the data we archive to identify correlations or themes we might have missed, or to check if I'm trading on old news that's getting rehashed or repackaged, or any number of things, really. This is our way of processing news and using market prep to create awareness. And it's as simple as this. Do the work. There's going to be those days when you're slammed with things to trade. Things are coming at you left and right, your order book's filled, chimes are going off, and it's awesome. And then there's those days when you've literally read the entire internet by lunchtime, and you're out of your mind. This is a great time to process and review some information, and it's a way to stay engaged in the market without losing your mind. Early on, when we were developing our event-based style of trading, I didn't think that hard work would affect my bottom line. 
The day's news was the day's news, and I couldn't control that, so just show up and take each day's events as they come. I couldn't know that Apple iPhone shipments would look weak, or Straight Path would get higher and higher bids, or that Amazon was about to enter and destroy some other industry. And while this is true, what I can control is my preparation to handle that news. The knowledge to know a good or a bad headline and how to react to each, or how one piece of news can ripple across the market, what weak iPhone shipments mean for STM or Verizon, or how call buyers in Straight Path kept expecting a higher bid, or if Amazon buys a PBM, how screwed are Walgreens and CVS? I've seen too many guys who show up 10 minutes before the bell, they turn on their computers, and they expect the ATM to turn on. Ask anyone who's been doing this for some time, if you could avoid just a couple of those big losers each year, what an amazing thing that'll do for your P&L and your psyche. If trading is your profession, be professional about it. Do the work, be smart, be prepared, and be protected. Thank you. <laughs>